Hey, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, I'm Alex, and I work at Oshkor. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about how uh, we use Cadence on our cloud platform. So that's a picture of me. Uh, I work on the data plane team on the HashiCorp cloud platform. Um, so we're responsible uh, for our data planes and all of the control plane services that uh, manage those data planes. Um, if you don't know what a data plane is, we'll learn. Uh, so what is uh, HashiCorp's cloud platform? Um, so HashiCorp cloud platform or HCP is our uh, fully managed offering of HashiCorp products. Um, so today, we support console, uh, vault, console vault on AWS, um, as well as the Packer artifact registry. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with console vault and Packer, console offers service-based networking, networking for dynamic infrastructure, um, and vault is our secure product. Uh, so you can secure secrets, uh, store um, PKI uh, certificates, uh, as well as uh, uh, authentication engines um, so you can authenticate with other uh, cloud providers. Uh, and so today we support AWS uh, for console and vault um, and more uh, clouds are coming soon. So check it out at cloud.hashicorp.com. Uh, so I touched a little bit on the control plane and the data plane. Um, so within HTTP, our architecture uh, is split into those two. Um, on the control plane side, we have a microservice architecture on top of the Hashi stack. Um, and so from the control plane, you can initiate operations such as user management, um, deploy our products, as well as uh, monitoring and maintenance operations. Um, and so the data plane uh, is the, the product that you've deployed uh, to, the, to the cloud that you've chosen in the region that you've chosen. Um, and uh, we manage those product deployments for you. So you don't have to worry about operations. Uh, you leave that to us. Um, and you just get to enjoy our product. So I mentioned the Hashi stack. Uh, for those unfamiliar with that, um, the, the Hashi stack consists of Nomad, Console, Vault, and Terraform. Um, so Nomad is our orchestration product. Uh, we use that on HTTP to orchestrate our containerized workloads. Uh, we use Console for service discovery and networking. Uh, we use Vault heavily for secrets, KV, PKI, transit encryption, um, as well as accessing um, other clouds. And all of our control plane, as well as our data planes, uh, are provisioned via Terraform. And we also uh, heavily leverage the integrations between our products. Um, my favorite is the Nomad Vault integration, uh, where you can inject secrets uh, into your Nomad jobs. It's amazing. Uh, so this is a Cadence meetup. Uh, how do we use Cadence? Um, so almost every single one of our microservices as an associated cadence worker. Um, and to support that, we've internally developed a common SDK. Um, so when, new, when we bring up new services, uh, they can easily bootstrap their worker um, and hook into our cluster. Uh, the team has also developed a Proto C plugin uh, to generate cadence activities um, for our RPCs, which is super handy. Um, and so every asynchronous action uh, that we take on HCP pretty much happens via Cadence. Um, and we also heavily leverage uh, Vault's transit encryption engine. Um, so when we're saving things in our workflow history, that's sensitive, uh, everything is encrypted. So going back to data plans, uh, here's kind of just a diagram uh, to describe how you as a user of HCP Vault in this case, uh, would access your data plan. So you would peer your network and be able to access um, your data plane, which is the vault server instances running within uh, a HashiCorp virtual network. And I threw this up there uh, to kind of set us up for uh, oh, an example workflow that we'll see here. So uh, this is an example of how we might go about uh, creating those instances. Um, and so we would have an activity to fetch the deployment from our data store. Uh, we build up the Terraform bars uh, for the instance, whether it's uh, the, the size of instance you chose and, and all of those parameters. Um, we would have an activity within that to decrypt anything that's sensitive. Um, and we'd also encrypt the bars before we pass them uh, to Terraform. 
Then we call a job workflow, which actually runs Terraform Apply to create the infrastructure. Um, and we heavily leverage a common format for workflow IDs uh, so that we can ensure that only a single apply is running for a given cluster, uh, a cluster action at a time. Uh, and then once that Terraform apply is finished, uh, we would signal back to the workflow that called it and say we're done. Um, so we kind of went on a few iterations of this approach. Um, originally, uh, we would run these Terraform applies um, on horizontally scaled worker instances. Um, and so, as I mentioned, since we run Terraform every time we want to create any cloud resources uh, in our data plane, this is in the hot path of pretty much every cluster creation. Um, and so uh, on these horizontally scaled worker instances, each time we wanted to run Terraform, uh, we would fetch all the Terraform files to run from the service that's running them, let's say console in this case. Um, and then within that worker, we would download the Terraform binary as well as all of the Terraform provider binaries um, at runtime. Uh, and then once all the config is in place, uh, we would actually run Terraform. And so after ramping up uh, the two product offerings, console and vault on ACP, uh, we started to see a few downsides to this approach. The main problem was that each worker could only handle a small number of concurrent runs. Um, and so there was extra configuration involved uh, to make sure that we each worker only picked up um, a few of those activities. Um, also, individual service teams could consume all the available Terraform workers in the case of let's say faults doing a fleet-wide upgrade um, or there's general high demand and a lot of customers are uh, creating clusters. Uh, and to handle this, we had to scale horizontally scale out these workers. Um, and this meant that um, during peak bursts, it was fine. Uh, but most of the time, a lot of those workers were sitting idle um, and we were wasting compute. So to solve this, uh, we leveraged Cadence's async activity completion. Uh, as well as Nomad's parameterized job feature. Uh, this allowed us to shift the scheduling and compute away from the Cadence worker instances and onto Nomad, uh, where each Terraform run runs as its own Nomad job. Yeah. This also allowed us, uh, since the job itself was using the Docker driver in Nomad, uh, we could bake the required Terraform files and provider binaries into uh, a Docker image uh, specific to the service that's running that Terraform. Um, and it eliminated that dynamic nature of the previous approach, uh, because previously, uh, if, a, if a bucket was misconfigured or DNS issues on the internet, um, that Terraform mode would fail. Um, with this approach, we also added uh, rate limiting as well as priority-based jobs. Um, so we can control the throughput of how many jobs we're dispatching and the missed and critical runs can be scheduled ahead of the latency ag agnostic background runs. So here's kind of an overview of what this asynchronous activity looks like. Um, the main part is uh, we have a sidecar that heartbeats Cadence to tell Cadence server um, that we're actually making progress on this activity. Uh, we have a, so we're heavily leveraging Nomad's uh, job lifecycle. So we have a pre-start task that would uh, take the input, decrypt it, um, get credentials, set up all the Terraform config for that. Um, then we'd run the main Terraform task. And then after that, uh, we'd read the output, encrypt it, and tell Cadence that, hey, we're done with this activity. And so, like I mentioned before, uh, we use Cadence pretty much everywhere in our control plane. Um, we have about uh, 2,000 workflows per minute and uh, about 6,000 activities per minute. So not quite Uber or Coinbase scale yet. And a few of the things we've learned uh, Async activity completion is great for offloading compute um, from your cadence workers. So if you have something that's super bursty, CPU bound, definitely look into async activity completion. Uh, cadence queries are also extremely useful um, for obtaining data within async activities. Uh, that's, we use cadence queries uh, for every one of those Terraform runs to kind of get their params. Um, and when you're running Terraform in your application code, um, you should definitely obtain your provider uh, binaries and any modules uh, at build time instead of at runtime. That's it. Uh, check out portal.cloud.hotchicorp.com and uh, thanks.